scriptures tonight for our foundational text, Hebrews chapter 4, 14, and 15, and then we'll go over to Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. Let us take all those tuning into the broadcast tonight, all those coming out to the house of God. We appreciate you tremendously. Appreciate the brethren in prison in a special way. I want you, brother, to be encouraged and go strong for the Lord. We'll look into the Word of God tonight. Hebrews 4, 14, and 15. Amen. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Seeing then we have a great high priest. That is passed into heaven. That is passed into heaven. Jesus was there with them physically. He was with the disciples physically. But he was crucified, resurrected the third day. He came back. And then he was with the brethren for a short period of time. And then he ascended back to glory to sit at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Here's the apostle saying, seeing then, since this is taking place, we have a high priest. He just did not just go back to heaven just to be up there, but he's up there doing something on our behalf. Oh, Lord. Come on and read that is passed into the heaven. That is passed into the heaven. Jesus, the Son of God. So you know for certain it was Jesus, amen. amen. The one who we follow, the one who we pledge our allegiance to. Jesus, amen, is the Son of God. He's no longer here, but we don't need to fret. I know we were kind of concerned when we found out that Jesus was going to be crucified and he was, he was going to leave, and we are his precious disciples. We are his followers. We don't need to fret. We don't need to worry. Right. Because, amen, he is going on to heaven. Hello. He just yeah. didn't leave us Hello. alone. Amen. It wasn't that he just don't right. care about us. We are okay. Right. Matter of fact, we're going to yeah. look into the word of God tonight. Yeah. We are actually in better shape, amen, than when he was here with us. Hello. My God, when he was Hello. here with us, my God, there was some limited yeah. capacity. My but God. now that he's going up to heaven, amen, Hello. he is our high priest, amen. Come on and read Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast God. our profession. Let us hold fast, saints of God. Yes. Let us not get yes. weary. Let us not pray. I know the Romans oh. are after us. I know the Jews are after us. I know the Gentiles don't understand us. But let us hold fast. My God, let's not waver. We're going to be going through things. And you may not see them here with right. us. My God, like we saw them before. But we got to believe, although he's not here with us physically, My God. he is very much with us. Amen. My God is Amen. Amen. And just Amen. how he provided for us when he was here with us, he wouldn't let nobody mess with us. He took care of us. He My provided God. for us. Oh. Now that he's going up to heaven, he is doing an even better job. Hello. So Hello. don't you fret. Don't you worry. Don't get turned cold. Don't get an attitude of uh, 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 fretting and concern because you don't see him. He's yet here with us. Hello. Thank God. Hello. Thank God. But we have not a high priest. But we have not a high priest. Which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Some of these high priests, my God, they were uh, born to, in the Levitical uh, uh, lineage, and they had, my God, privileged uh, uh, lifestyles, and many times the people would come to them with issues, my God, and no doubt they fully couldn't comprehend, my God, my God, what some of them was going through because they had never gone through nothing like that. 
Sometimes you come to the high priest, my God, and no doubt you're asking for his help or you're asking for his God, and it was something that you were going through that he had never been through. My God. Sometimes they would ask the high priest about this, that, and the other, and he might have, because he wrote the law, because he had put it in such, my God, because he enforced the law and he interpreted the law, he would put it in such a way that sometimes it would seem a little strange. But my God, the apostle is saying here, we ain't got a high priest that don't understand come what we on, go through. All right. On. We don't have a dry high priest up here just reading from some Levitical law, my God. But we got a high priest that can feel what we're yeah, going man. through. My God. That understands. My Lord. Yeah. My Lord. That's Amen. why the Bible said, my God, the spirit, my God, the letter without the spirit will kill you. My, my God. God, the word, my God, without the spirit will destroy you. It'll discourage you. But we got a high priest that'll come down to your level and walk with you at your pace. My Lord, we got Amen. a high priest will see you all the way Amen. through, my Amen. God. He's not as a new convert going to try to hold you to a standard for somebody who's been around here for 30 years. All he right. ain't going to, my God, see you going through one thing after another and not have empathy based upon your circumstances and your situation. I may not feel like God. Right. I may not be like Sister Soul because Sister Soul ain't going through what I'm going through. God. But I got a high priest that understands yes. me. Yes. I got a high priest that understands exactly what I'm going through. When I pray, I just don't pray some words. He knows exactly how I'm praying. He knows exactly how I'm feeling because he's been there before. Yes. Hey, yes. Hey, yes. We got a king yes. of all kings. We got a priest of all priests. But we got some. I appreciate the resurrection. I appreciate the blood of Jesus. But one thing I appreciate is that he is the Messiah that's been where I'm going. My he God. is the Messiah that can feel me when I go through. He oh. don't just have sympathy for me, but he has oh. empathy for us. Amen. God. Sympathy God. is, God. I'm sorry about what you're going through. Empathy is, I can feel what you're going yeah. through. My God. God, we get a high priest. Come on. Amen. God. Amen. God. But with all points tempted, like as we are, but with all points tempted, this is not talking about just the fact that he was tempted in our perspective. Many times we look at that and say that he was tempted with a woman. He was tempted to get mad. Oh, no, 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 no. This is much deeper than that. This is saying that he was in all points tempted or tried. He went through not just a temptation to commit sin. This is much deeper than that. He knows what it means and what it feels like to be rejected. He knows what it feels like to have everybody turn on you. My God. He knows what it feels like sometimes to seem like nobody fully understands you. He knows what it feels like, my God, to be separated from loved ones. He was going through every trial and principle that you could ever go through. My God. Every my feeling that you've ever felt. You ever felt like you can't make it? You ever felt like you can't make it another step? He felt that way before, too. You ever felt like, my God, you may not be good enough? Come you ever on. felt like that? Hold on, people count me out. Come on, you ever felt like you 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 you, you just throw her on a scrap heap? He felt that way too. He actually everything that you can go through in principle, he actually went through it. Come on, read. But was in all points tempted like as we are. But was in all points tempted like as we are. Yet without sin. Yet my God without sin. Come on. Let us therefore come Let us boldly. Therefore. Come boldly unto the throne of grace. Unto the throne of grace. Amen. We may obtain mercy. My God, we can come boldly. Amen. We can come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. And find grace to help. Thank God sometimes we're going to need mercy. Mercy is something that you didn't deserve. Amen. Maybe you didn't go through something exactly like you should have. Thank God, I'm Lord, I'm pleading. I'm asking for mercy today. Thank God, Lord, I need mercy. We can come boldly and say, Lord, I'm asking for mercy. Come on, Marie. And find grace to help. And find grace. My God, when you're really going through, my God. When you're, listen, that's a deadly combination there. Mercy and grace. Oh, my Lord. Thank God. That's a tremendous combination there, my God. My God. Grace, my God. He can give us strength, my God, that's beyond anything we possess within ourselves. My God, he can give us grace and strength. My God, and virtue, my God, to go further when we didn't feel we could go another step. But my God, He said, Mercy. Mercy, my God, is what you just cry out when you don't know what to cry. My God, mercy is what you cry out because sometimes with grace, you got to kind of put your resume in there. Lord, you know how I've stood, and Lord, you know what I've done, and Lord, you know how I've been this, and Lord, you know how I've been that. Please give me grace. But my God, when you can't quite see yourself totally clear, when you don't really know, don't Amen. really know, and my perhaps God. I might have done something right. I shouldn't have done, but Lord, I'm like, here I'm going through it, and I just said, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord. 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 Don't qualify for Amen. grace. I'm asking you in this situation until I get myself situated. Give me some mercy. Protect me to the My God. That's what he's talking about there. Thank God grace is what you qualify for. Grace is what you got. My God, when you've done everything right and in order. But mercy is what you need to care.
carry you to the position to where you qualify for the grace of God. He said we can have grace and we can have mercy. My Lord. Because he knows what we're going through. He knows exactly what we're feeling. He knows exactly what the saints are dealing with. My God. And what you would deal with down throughout the gospel day. So he said they're going to need grace. Yeah. But if I leave out mercy. My Lord. Many times we think mercy is just for a sinner. Come we on. think mercy is just for those that may be atheists or may have actually. Thank God he knew the saints going to need mercy too. I can't just give them grace. My God, that's essential. But they're also going to need mercy. Let's go over to Philippians chapter 8, number 1. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Verse number three. I thank God. I thank my God upon every remembrance of this you. This is Apostle Paul writing to a beloved congregation in Philippi, whom he cared deeply about. Many of them had left Judaism, paganism, and all type of other isms to come to accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And he knew in doing this they would be persecuted. They would go through a wide variety of challenges. Yes. He knew because they had left that former life of sin, some of them, my God, it was living with people they weren't married to. Some of them was involved in all type of sexual relationships that wasn't of God. And my God, some of them was involved in all type of uh, uh, behavioral substance abusive patterns that were not of God. And they had left all of that alone to become a follower of Jesus. And here he was penning this letter to encourage them. He knew their battle and their journey would be long and difficult. But here he is endeavoring to encourage them. Come on and read. Always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy. Now that's a true man of God there. He said, I'm constantly praying for you. I'm constantly in every prayer of mine. I'm praying for you. Come on and read. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing. He said, being confident of this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in you. He which hath begun a good work in you. Thank God salvation is a good work. Oh. Thank God salvation is a tremendous work. Yeah. How you can take a young lady, my God, out there in the streets of Jackson. A young lady out there in the streets of Albion or Battle Creek, my God, involved in all type of ungodliness. A young man, my God, down in Detroit or Miami, my God, involved in all type of ungodliness. And in a moment of time, God can deliver them from sin, my God. Change their minds, my God. Change their habits, my God. Change the way they dress, amen. Change the way they talk, my God. He that begun a good work. Thank God salvation is a good work. It'll make a man go back home to his wife and take care of his children, amen. Hello. It'll make my God a young lady say, I'm keeping myself. I'm not going to be fooling around with all these boys, amen. Thank my God, God. Uh, salvation is a good work. My It'll Lord. take you outside, my God, to rock it, my God. Salvation to have you say, I ain't going back there. Hey, hey, I don't want nothing else to do, God. my God, with the post, amen. My Lord. My Lord. I don't want nothing else to do, my God, with uh, Nicki Minaj. And I don't want nothing to do with uh, Jay-Z. All my these Lord. ungodly folk that's turning the whole generation against the principles of the word of God. All Thank right. God when you get saved, amen. Salvation to do, my God. Well, if I was the parent, if I would want anything else in the world for my child, I would want him to be saved. Amen. Because my God, Amen. the moment he got saved, I ain't got to worry about the way he dressed. I ain't got to worry about what he listened to. I ain't got to worry about him abusing his body. My I ain't got to worry about, my God, sexual involvement. Hello. I ain't got to worry about any of those things. Why? Because he's saved. Amen. My God. Thank my God. God. Thank the Lord. is a good work. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Come on, read. So he that have begun a good work in you. He that have begun a good work in you. Will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He, my God, who at that altar of prayer. Thank God, amen, to save your soul from sin. Thank God, I am confident, I am encouraged. Church at the little Philippi, I'm confident and I'm encouraged. Generation today, he that saved your soul, my God, will see you all the way through. My God, to the day of Jesus Christ, until the day you die, thank God he was confident if you came and gave your life to God. And you're truly saved. He said, I'm confident. He that begun a good work. Yes. Although you're going to go through things, although you're going to be tried, sure. he will see you all the way through till you draw your last breath. He will not leave you up there. He will not allow you to go through anything by yourself. 
He will be with you every step of the way. He will open doors that need to be opened. He will shut doors that need to be shut. He will fight those that fight against you. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will provide for you. He that begun a good work in you. Yes, yes, yes. Is faithful. My Lord. You're performing. My God. I just want to talk to you tonight about these two scriptures combined. The first one began to speak about God and his ability to have empathy upon we have a high priest that can be touched by what we're going through and understands exactly what we're going through. He said, and the second aspect in his letter to the Philippi church, he said, he that begun a good work will do it all the way through. I'm going to talk to you just for a few moments tonight along the thought of God cares and will bring you through. Thank the Lord. My God. Amen. Amen. God cares. My God. And will bring you through. Amen. Saints of God, be encouraged tonight. Those that have recently gotten saved, you need not fear. We're going to look into the Word of God tonight to encourage your soul. God cares and He will bring you through. Amen. Something God cannot do. And among those things is He cannot fail. Thank you, God. He cannot fail. And another thing that God cannot do is He cannot lie. He cannot lie. And according to His Word, my God, He said that He will bring you through all the way. My God, and according to His Word, He has empathy, and He's a high priest that can be touched when you go through. My God, thank through. the Lord. Amen. So you be Amen. encouraged, my God. God cares and will bring you through. Now, one thing we must understand. Sometimes, because we dwell with doctrinal aspects of salvation, we don't fully comprehend exactly the totality of salvation. Go over to 2 Peter chapter number 1. Read verse number 3, verse number 11. It's a lot more than you just being forgiven. It's a lot more than you just stopped smoking. My God, when you got saved, something wonderful happened. Come on and read 2 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 11. For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Here the Apostle Peter was speaking about who we gave our life to when we came and got saved. And he said, he's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. Many times, because we're burdened about the loss, because we're burdened, we don't want to see people's lives destroyed by sin. We don't want to see people out there being destroyed by the devil. So many, and we don't want to see false religion fall short of speaking on how God's deliverance is total. So many times, we'll focus more so on the Savior part. That God is able to save us from sin. That God is able to save us from being held accountable for our past sins, which is forgiveness. Yes. Many times we will speak about how God is able to save us from hell when we get saved. Amen. Our, uh, our, 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 should we say, our future appointment with hell is canceled. Yes. So many times we focus on, thank God we can save, live free from sin. That's the saving part, and that's all good. Thank God God is able to sanctify. He's able to save us from that carnal nature within us that will push us back towards sin if we don't get those roots out. He's able to save us, my God, from having those uh, uh, deep-seated issues down in us that will cause us, my God, to still have carnality and an affinity towards the world, my God, and an affinity towards getting back at people and an affinity towards carnality, my God. He said he's able to save us from that. But that's also a part of his saving grace. That's also a part of his attribute of saving. But the other element that he talked about is he said he's our Lord. Lord represents yeah, yeah. our overseer, yeah. our provider. The Lord yeah. over a place means that he totally took care of all that which is up under his office. Lord, it was up to the Lord to make sure that the nation had proper irrigation systems to make sure all the crops were properly watered. It was the Lord that made sure, my God, that they had generals in place to make sure that the army was equipped to defend. 
It was the Lord that made sure that they had systems in place to make sure that the widows was properly provided for. My it God. was the Lord of a place, my God, that made sure, amen, that when they used the bathroom, they had proper uh, systems in place that took care of the sewage so the people wouldn't get afflicted. It was the Lord, amen, that cared for the people, my God, that set watchmen up at the night on the towers, not just to make sure that they were provided for within, but make sure nothing far away would ever come to them without them being properly warned for. Here he was saying that we have a Savior, but we also have a Lord. When you come and get saved, amen, it's not just about you coming to an altar of prayer saying, God, forgive me, I promise never to sin again. I believe your son Jesus Christ is, uh, is, is the son of God, and I invite him into my life from this moment. That's not only what happened. Not only, Lord, I'm living with somebody I'm not married to, and I'm involved in some ungodliness. Tonight I'm going to get saved, and I'm going to discontinue all my sinful ways, amen. and I'm going to live a holy and a sin-free life. From this day forth, by your grace and your power, Lord, I'll never go back to that. That's not all that happened. When you came and got saved, amen, not only was you delivered and forgiven, but Jesus Christ, the Son of God, became your Lord. Amen. Oh, amen. 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 You ain't out there by yourself. Oh. All right. Amen. One scripture, he said, my God, for ye are not your own. Come on. My God. When you come and get saved, amen, what do you call it? They say, I gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ. I gave my heart, amen, therefore I'm going to be faithful and holy. But I also gave my life to him, amen. Now I am his responsibility. Amen. Oh, God. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is your Lord. Come on. My God. The Son of My God. My God. Yeah, Come on. You don't need to stay up at night worrying about your issue. Your Amen. issue is his Amen. issue. Amen. 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 God. When you were, my God, inside of a place in the Hebrew customs, right. when you were inside of a, they had wall cities, amen. Thank God, Jesus Christ gave you a wall of salvation to keep yeah. spirits out. That's why all day long, you ain't just sitting there, think for a moment. You ain't sitting there just saying, uh, 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 lusting, uh, this day, uh, 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 but 99% of the things that come against you, you don't even realize, my God. They run up against that wall and they go running. My Lord. All right. My God. God. Thank the Lord. The Lord, these people wasn't in these cities concerned about, okay, now, how are we going to eat? Now, what if the Philistines come? Now, what about, that ain't my job. I just live. Amen. My Lord. I'm just going to make sure I don't leave the wall. My God. Amen. I'm just going to make sure I stay within the confines of our territory. Amen. Amen. Now, as long as I do that, all of my provisions and everything that I go through, all the things that come my way, my Lord going to take care of me. Amen. Oh, but, oh, Amen. Don't Amen. you understand a famine is coming? That's good. That's good. Don't you understand a famine is coming in this room? A neighboring cousin come from another district. Don't you understand a famine is coming? Don't you, aren't you afraid? Why aren't you afraid? You don't know who my Lord is, do you? My God, Amen. my Lord. I saw this family a long time ago. A long time ago. A long time ago. Amen. He's already making provision. Amen. I heard that there's some army coming. You don't know who my Lord is. My Lord. That's God. That's God. It's real good. Amen. When we come and give our hearts to God, saints, He knows we're going to go through. My God, what a benefit. He knows that we're going to be challenged. The Bible said, my God... They that shall live godly shall suffer persecution. All right. yeah. Through great tribulation we shall enter into the kingdom. Yeah. All that we understand that. But saints of God, God cares. And I'm going to show you through the word of God, he will bring you through. Hello. Not leave you in. He will bring you through. Not see you through. Mm -hmm. He will bring you through whatever My comes God. your way. My God. Let's look into the word of God. Amen. Go over the second... I'm sorry, go over to Mark chapter 4, verse 36. God does not like praying. He does not like his children being overly concerned about what they're going through and wondering how they're going to get through it. I'm going to show you through the word of God, Mark chapter 4, verse 36. God does not like when a Christian frets and is concerned about things that are his responsibility. Come on. Come on and read it. Mark 4, 36 through 49. And when they had sent away the multitude... Go back up to verse 35, please. Mark 4, 35. And the same day... And the same day... When the 
even was come, when the even was come, he said unto them, He said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. They took him as even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. There were also with them other little ships. Many of the people were trying to get to Jesus. They heard about his power and his authority. They were trying to get him. So here his disciples, his followers, was taking him away for a reprieve. Come on and read. And there arose a great storm of wind. While they were gone away, there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. So the waves beat into the ship to the point in which it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. Uh, and he the was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillows. Come on. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose. Hold on. And they went and woke him up, and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now we're going through a storm. And listen to the death of the saints. Not only are we going through a storm, but the effects of the storm are beginning to affect us. The waters actually came over the sides and began to fill the ship. True. Now watch the death of Jesus in regards to how he feels about his saints, those that are true blue. Those that are genuinely for real children of God. Those that have given up everything in their life that is simple to serve and live for Him. Here, they're actually going through a real life storm. And the effect of the storm, they are significantly feeling. But still, watch how He feels about one of His children fretting and being concerned and up worried. Come on and read it. And they awake me. And said unto him, and they awake, and said unto him, Master, Master, thou not that we perish. You don't even care about us. You ain't careful. Many people are saying that. Do you, do you even care, Lord? Don't you see what I'm going through in my body? Don't you see my home? Don't you see my finance? Don't you see my children? Don't you see my... Don't you see... Do you not even care about us? Come on and read. And he arose. And rebuked the wind. And he arose and rebuked the wind. And said unto the sea. And said, my, my, my. Oh, uh, he first dealt with the cause of the issue. All right. Oh, Amen. The wind was the cause oh, of that which was causing them to fret. My God. So first he got up. See, many times, and the reason why you don't need to deal like the my God with your own situations is many times you won't deal with the symptoms. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, amen. 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 You're going to find yourself arguing with somebody, or you're going to find yourself dealing with this, or find yourself, you really need to focus on the cause. It ain't that person that's your problem. It's the cause that's causing them to be a problem to you. My Lord. And that's what prayer does. Prayer deals with the cause of the issues that's causing you problems, but you deal with the symptoms. My Lord. So here you are wasting your virtue. Now God got a tired child. My God. And symptoms does not even be in there. My Lord. So he got up first. And he rebuked the wind. Yes. Cut it out. <laughs> Stop it. It's about to come over. 
over now. I'm rebuking y'all as well. My God. I want total peace My Lord. in this situation. My Lord. Keep reading. And the wind ceased. Yes, and the wind, thank God y'all understand, my God. Do you know who your Lord is? Oh, my God. Yes, God. Thank you. Now that's the power, of my God. Thank you, Jesus. Now that's the power, of my God. It didn't say that God. It got genuinely better in a few hours. It said, my saints, if y'all would have saw that, it would have blew your mind. It was a full-fledged storm. Come on. Everywhere they looked, my God, was dark as midnight. My God, waves as high as buildings. All over the place. They're going to and fro. Ship filling with water. All type of uncertainty. Everywhere. But my God, when their Lord, God. My Lord. got a hold of the situation, my God. thank God, at that moment, my the God. winds absolutely stopped. The waves that was halfway down came back up and sat back down real quick and didn't go on it. My God. My Lord. My Lord. Immediately, he said, peace. Let's go. Be still. These are my children. I'm with them. My God. Peace. Be still. Come on, read. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And there was a great calm. Amen. Thank God, saying some of the calmest things ever is after the storm. Amen. My Lord, some of the calmest days ever is right after a storm. Some of the calmest times of the whole is almost an eerie type of calm. You can't hardly hear nothing. My Lord, you can, it's just, just, just a great calmness after a tremendous storm. I sometimes go outside to a tremendous storm. It seems the light is just trickling through the cloud and the wind, the trees. And my God, you can hear little birds. I mean, you just hear, it is a tremendous stillness about it all. My God. Come on, read, brother. And he said unto them, and he said unto them, but he wound up. After he dealt with the situation, now he's going to deal with them. Come on, read. And he said unto them, Yes. Why are you so fearful? Uh-huh. How is it that you have no faith? Oh. Why are you so fearful? Come on. I'm your Lord and Savior. I promise, I'm going to see you all. I said, follow me. I got you. Y'all knew I was on board. That's the only thing you should have been concerned with. Was uh, was I on board? My God. I'm on board? I don't care how big. But the storm. But you understand water? I'm on board and you frightened? My God. I'm on board? And you concerned? I'm on board? And you're talking about, we about to perish in this situation? Are you saved? You telling me, Lord, I, it looks like it's all about to go down. Lord, I got eight bills and the ninth one just came. Am I on board? Lord, it seems that every resource that I had has gone dry. My God. Lord, I don't feel... Lord, this affliction is getting worse, not better. Lord, I'm trying to keep... Lord, the water is rising on my boat. Look. Turn to Second Chronicles. Turn to Second Chronicles 20, verse 12. What was he saying there? Second Chronicles. God cares and will bring you through. Second Chronicles 20, verse number 12. Oh, our Lord. Will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great Lord, power. We have no might. Lord, will thou not deal with them? Will you not deal with my issues? I can't deal with these. We have no might, no strength, no virtue, no energy. Come on, read. Against this great company that comes against us. My Lord, a great company mean a multitude. Amen. Need to know that we, what we do. Lord, but I, I, hold on. on. I don't know what to do in this situation. But he said what? Neither know what neither know we what to do. Neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. But our eyes are upon thee. Call Judah stood before the Lord. And all Judah stood. My Lord. You 
can't run and expect God to defend you. My God. You can't run and expect God to bring you through. If you run, He has nothing to defend. You not this? Right. It said all Judah stood surrounded by a great company, knees buckling and everything else. In order to get this thing to work, saints, the Bible said without faith, it's impossible to believe. It's impossible, my God, to please Him. Without faith, my God, it will not work. All we have to do, saints, is keep Him on board and have faith that He's going to bring us through. And He cannot not bring us through. Amen. Here He said, all you the stood. I'm encouraging you tonight. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm encouraging you tonight to stand up. To stand me. up, my Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't know how you feeling. I don't know how big your company you facing is. But all I'm asking you tonight is get some inspiration, get some energy from somewhere. Some folk been running. Some folk been running from some issues that they dealt with. What, my, what do I mean by running, my God? Doing other stuff? Worrying? Complaining? My God. But stand up. Sometime in the, in the middle of the ghetto, Parents trying to keep put their parent I mean keep put their children up on that witch and how to deal with bullies. So sometimes they tell them, listen, I ain't about violence and all that. But that bully come mess with you, stand up to him. Stand up to him, my God. Many times, my God, we run. We don't deal with it. But he said, When you stand up, you unleash me. My God. When you stand up to it. Oh my God. When you face it in the face. When you let God know, Lord. I cannot deal, I'm not, I rebuke the spirit of hopelessness for my situation. My God, my Lord, my Lord, amen. Thanks to God, the devil is trying to bring a spirit of hopelessness to issues and circumstances and situations that the saints of God are going through. The devil will actually have you feeling like the God of all creation can't deal with and bring you through and correct your little situation. So therefore, you're not standing and it's tying his hands to work it. But if you can get some courage from somewhere to stand up and believe and believe God in your situation. Let me tell you something. Do you know, my God, by the grace of God, listen to me. Do you know sometimes you can go through some situations where it will be easier for you to believe that he parted the Red Sea and created Mars, Neptune, Jupiter, and Venus, and all the rest of them and their moons. It will be easier for you to believe in that than the situation that you're in right now that he can speak to it and turn the whole thing around. Thank God. God. Hallelujah. Praise you. That's what the devil works with. He knows that if they don't believe, if they don't stand up to it with expectation, yeah. it's going to hinder God from working. So their situation will just linger. God is sitting back saying, when are you going to stand up? When are you going to stand up? He's screaming. He's telling you, just stand up. Just stand up. But I can't. I have no might against this great company. Don't you realize how big they are? God is saying, listen to me. My God, they used to have what they call WWF wrestling. And when a person was in the ring, if they were tired, getting beat up, they always had a choreograph that if they could some type of way get to the ends of their corner to touch my Lord and tag my God. That individual that was in that corner, it was amazing. Every time they tagged them, I don't care how weak or how strong that person was, every time they tagged that corner, that person came out whooping heads. <laughs> it was just amazing. I don't know how that person came up out of there, and it was amazing how the person that was just whooping head turns into a complete sissy. When you stand up, you tag me. Here you are fighting the situation, worrying about how you want to deal with this, worrying about this, thing. and God is simply saying, I'm on board, right? You clear, right? You saved, right? You're not a hypocrite, right? You honest, right? Well, I'm on board. Now all I'm asking you to do is stand. Don't quit talking about the complexity of your issues. I care about you. I understand. I'm going to bring the right formula. I know exactly what you're going through. 
I promise never to leave you nor forsake you. I said I'm the Alpha and Omega. Malo. I'm the beginning. My God. I'm the end. Malo. Malo. Amen. 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 I am the God. And we call him God. And I'm not going to this tonight. But in the Hebrew, they had multiple names. They didn't believe in multiple gods. But they had multiple names because they personalized it. Yes. I'm not going to go and step my God. Right. But sometimes you better understand that God is your protector. Right. God is your provider. Yeah. God is L-O. I mean, God will work with you. Hello. So here he's saying, they stood up. They stood up and they believed God. They said, Lord, my situation is unlike anything I've ever been through. Lord, I cannot figure out how this thing can be corrected. I've just about given up hope, and I've learned, actually, and too many saints have done the same. Too many saints have actually learned how to live with issues and circumstances that they don't even have to learn to live like. My God. My God. They may make heaven. They don't, may make it. They may not backslide, but their journey is going to be so much tougher because if they had allowed God to really and really bleed God, and really had faith, and really and stood up to it, and really said, some people might not, don't even pray for the unsaving painters no more. Not in a fervent way. Because it's just like out of routine. But to really believe this woman can get saved, this man can get saved. Some people don't really even pray in a real fervent with expectation. Lord, I'm, I'm saying, Lord, Lord, I believe, Lord, Lord. And God is saying, what? Well, that's basically vain repetition. But if you can believe tonight, yeah. he said, all things, all things are possible to them that just that believe, them that stand up and really say, Lord, I'm in a mess. I'm in a situation with you, my Lord. And I'm asking you tonight, I'm asking you tonight to turn this thing around. Come on, read, brother. And he said, and he said, hearken ye all Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Hearken ye all Judah. And inhabitants. Come on, read. And thou, King Jehoshaphat. Thus said the Lord. Oh, sorry, go back to verse 13. All right, all right. And all Judah stood before the Lord. And all Judah stood before the Lord. With their little ones. My Lord, their little ones. Their wives and their children. My Lord took the God. things that were valuable and presented them to God and said, Lord, if I perish, Lord, these things are valuable to me, Lord. Lord, I need you to bring me through. We can't be out here in the, uh, in the cold. We can't just be out here, Lord. Where are we going to live at? My Lord. Lord God, if I lose my life, Lord God, who's going to pray my children and grandchildren through? Right. Lord God, if I'm not here, Lord God, who's going to be an intercessor for my family, Lord? My Lord, if you leave me just out here like this, Lord God, Lord, if you don't heal my body, Lord God, Lord, I won't be able to fulfill, dear God, my course with joy. Lord, everything that's valuable to me, they took it and they presented it to God. Sometimes you got to... Sometimes you got to touch God's empathy, my God. Put your issues out there and touch him, my God, where it hurts at. Say, Lord, hold on, Lord. Hold on, Lord. Amen. If you don't come through for me, I'm going to be locked up. My Lord. If you don't come through for me, Lord God, I'm going to lose everything I got, Lord. Lord, all these things that are valuable, Lord God. God, I'm going to lose everything. If you don't come through for me, God. They took all the little ones. They took all, my God, their, their children. They said, Lord, if you don't come through, we're going to lose everything that's ever been valuable to us. Lord, if you don't come through for us, Lord God, we're going to lose the whole congregation, Lord. Lord, if you don't come through for us, Lord God, we're going to lose all our families, Lord God. Lord, if you don't come through for us, Lord God, Father, my children, they're going to grow up, my God, without a saved mom and dad. Lord, if you don't come through for us, they were endeavoring to touch God where it hurt. Said, Lord, we are standing up. We have faith, Lord. Lord, we're bringing everything that's back. Sometimes you got to bring stuff and put it in God's face, my God. Say, Lord, if you don't heal my body, dear God, Father, who's going to be that rock for my family, Lord God? Lord, I'm okay, dear God. I can go to heaven, but I'm concerned about these little ones, Lord God. I want to be here for the work. I want to be here for my family, Lord God. Lord, you got to send me through, Lord God. Lord, if you don't strengthen me, Lord God, I'm not going to make it another day. If you don't bring me through, Lord God, I'm going to be able, my God, to see myself through this, Lord. You got to take it to the Lord. You gotta touch God, God, my God. You gotta let Him know. Don't you pray no vain prayer, Lord? No, name what you're going through. Say how it feels. Tell Him how it hurts. Lord, it hurts right here. Lord, it hurts right there too, Lord. Lord, my mind is really affected by what I'm going through. And I need you, my God. They call every one of their little ones. They call all the daughters. They dust up everything they had. They brought them all to Him, my God. And they stood before God. I took him pitiful. And that's what we got to do sometimes. We got to stand before God and look at him pitiful. And say, Lord, if you don't know, if you don't see us too, Lord, if you don't feel us, Lord, I want you to feel.
Lord, I'm your child. Amen. I'm your child. You promised to care about me. Lord, I need you to come through for me, Lord. Come on and read. Verse 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord. And all Judah stood before the Lord. With their little ones, with their, their wives, little ones, and their wives, and their children. Come on and read. Now, Jeho 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 I don't know how they had that. He said they had little ones. I don't know what that included, because they talk about children somewhere else. He just took everything, my God. They said they bought their little ones, my God. Maybe that was the infants, my God. He said, I'm bringing everybody. My little baby said, get them out the crib and bring them through, too, my God. Bring everything I can. My grandchildren, bring them on in here, Lord God. Everything's on line. Listen, what you're going through affects more than you. I know. Follow what he's saying there. Saints of God. The outcome of what you're going through right now is going to affect way more than just you. All right. My God. If we don't have God deliver in some situations that we go through, my God, the effects of that thing is going to be widespread. And here he was bringing the widespread. He said, Lord, it's much more than just me. What I need you to come through for me here is way more than just me. And Lord, I can't hardly deal with the great multitude and the perplexity of what I'm going through today. Come on and read then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mathaniah, uh -huh. a Levite of the sons of Asa, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Yeah, Come yeah. on, my God. Came and the Spirit he, of the Lord. And he yeah. said, yeah. Yeah, hold on, my God. Many times, my God, when you're going through something and you can't see your way through, many times, my God, you're going to need a Jehaziel. <laughs> my God, you know, and God is faithful, my God. No doubt they saw the multitude and the giantness of their circumstances and situation. And here, the Spirit of the Lord came upon this young man, the son of Zechariah. To I don't know how old he was. Maybe he was 11, 12. I don't know how old he was. But my God, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Thank that God. brother stood up <laughs> in the midst of it. He said, hold on. Hold on. Listen to me. Listen, hold, hold. What y'all fretting about? Hold on now. All right. What did he say, my friend? And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Oh, eleven year old, however old year old boy this was. No, they called him a son of somebody. He's something old or nothing. Hearken unto me, all y'all priests and Levites and all y'all leaders. Listen to me for a moment here. Listen to me, my mamas and daddies. Let grandmothers and grandparents listen to me. No doubt you have to stand up on something so they can see them because they're so little. Listen to me for one. Can I have your attention for one moment? And what did he say? And go, ahead, King, go, ahead and preach, go ahead and preach to Azrael. Come on and read. Thus said the Lord unto you. He said, Thus said the Lord, uh, he put the word on. Now, this is what I'm saying. But the Holy Ghost came down in me. And I'm speaking with God. Thus said the Lord unto you. Read. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great moment. Hey, Don't God, you be God. God. afraid or dismayed by reason of this great don't let the vastness of your situation be the reason that you fret, because your focus is on the wrong place. I don't care what you got. My God, come on. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care who's coming against you. I don't care what the doctor said. Come on. This young man stood up and he said, "My God, be not afraid or despair for the greatness of the situation you're dealing with." Why did he say that? Come on and read. For the battle is not yours, but the Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. 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 They let me go for my job. But Lord, you understand that none of the application I'm putting in there did not re But Lord, you understand this bill's coming up and I don't something little down in you. You gotta stand up. <laughs> let me speak. Something little way down the left side. Way deep down. You gotta stand up and calm down the rest of your mind, body, and thought process and everything else. And say, why are you so concerned? Why are you fretting so much? Don't you know what the Lord said? The battle is not yours. You can
concerned about the multitude of what you're going through when you should be concerned about the multitude of the God you serve. Thank God. If you really understood God, don't you know He knows that every hair on the on your head? Don't you know it's numbered? Don't you know last night when on your pillow one fell out, He took His book out and counted that one? Thank God. Don't you understand? This is real. This ain't theology. We just didn't say, God, forgive me. I'm turning from sin. I ain't going to rap no more. I ain't going to sleep around no more. No! We gave our life to God. God got us now. God got you now. Give this young man to stand up. And sometimes something down here every once in a while got to remind us. And my God, if you want him to, he can write historical amen to Jehezreel. My God, take you back, my God. To the Red Sea. Bring you down through, my God, the wilderness. They didn't have no Walmarts. They didn't need a Walmart. They had something better than a 24. See, Walmart no doubt came from the premise. Maybe Sam Walton was up one night <laughs> on his bed and he was reading down through the Word of God and he began to read down through Joshua and Judah and started reading about the wilderness. And he said, Now, if they were in this place and they had food, they had shoes, they had clothes, and they always had it whenever they needed it, and they basically had anything that they needed. Why? Wouldn't that be awesome to have a store that never closed? They got everything you possibly can want, and it's all. Man, God, say, hold on, bro. See, if you want to be a millionaire, just read the Bible. Amen. Just read the Word of God and find out what God did. My God, he said, and they thinking the Sam, Sam Walton, he came up with a genius idea. Don't you know the God who we serve? He was in the Walmart business before Walmart was around, my God. Thank God. Thank God he was with them every step of the way, saints. And many times, no doubt, this young man to stand up and take them all through. And they appear reading all this stuff every day. And here come a few hundred men. And they frighten. And if we're not careful, the same, we're reading all this. Mm. Reading all about the rich, it opened up. It stood on two walls. It closed right back. Pharaoh and his army all overthrown. And the red, they were out there in the wilderness. Their shoes grew as they grew. And all this stuff. Uh, they came and they uh, uh, the prophet, they went through a place called the lion's den. God shut them out for the lion. Amen. And one time this big man came. His name was Goliath. God took a little boy and. <laughs> what can he do for you? My God. Same God. Oh, Lord God. And you got to pray after he's done all of that. You're not asking God, my God, for some Bentley or, or some uh, Maybach or something. No. We said, Lord, just see me through it. Lord, just see me through it. I'm not asking for a million dollars. You got me pay my bills. That's all. That's all I'm asking for, Lord. I ain't trying to be rich, Lord God. I ain't trying to be Bill Gates and all of them. We just help me deal with consumers, my God. I don't want my groceries to do it, my God. Come, they shall not last. So keep praying and tolling on. 